What's up everybody? In this short video, I'm going to walk you through how I transformed my boring, uninviting home gym into a much more exciting space. Hope you enjoy it. The paneling I used on this project was just some sanded poplar from Lowe's that you see on your screen here. I think it was about $15 per 4x8 sheet when I bought it. You could easily swap this out for really any kind of paneling um, that accepts you know, stain or paint. I think paint would look just as good as stain on this project, which I, I considered. So I grabbed four of these sheets and then went ahead and ripped them down into eight inch strips with my table saw. The edges were pretty clean from the saw, but I did do kind of some quick sanding on the edges just to clean them up and make sure everything looked good. Then from there, it was time to apply some stain to these panels. Um, you know, I honestly wasn't too sure how the stain would look on this plywood, but I really liked the way it turned out. And I just used this Minwax gel stain in Walnut I personally love gel stain. In my opinion, it's some of the easiest and most forgiving to work with. So that's what I most always use nowadays. But if you haven't used gel stain before, it's, it's really easy to use. It's basically like the texture of pudding. And essentially, all you'll do is, as you can see here, all I did was apply some globs to the board. Um, I just used a foam brush here and, and kind of spread it evenly across the board. Um, I will do a quick freeze frame here. You'll notice. I'm wearing socks with sandals, and this is critical to any project turning out well. But besides that, you'll also notice that I didn't apply any stain on the edges of the panels. So later on in the project, this becomes a bit of an issue as some of the unstained lighter wood becomes visible in some of the gaps between the panels, um, which I end up having to fix. So I would definitely recommend during this step, do kind of some quick staining on or painting uh, on the edges as part of it you know, to get the best results and save yourself some time and hassle later. But once the stain is applied, you'll basically just wipe it off. Um, you can see I'm just using paper towels here. You can also use a cloth or a pad, but paper towels have worked great for me. The key is to wipe it off well and not leave any, you know, excess or it'll end up getting sticky and not drying well. So now we're inside and really the main prep that I did besides moving stuff out of the way is just removing the baseboards. Um, I wanted the baseboards to be on top of the paneling rather than trying to butt it up perfectly with the baseboards, if that makes sense. So I just removed them by cutting the caulk seal, as you can see here with the utility knife, and then prying them off. I used a hammer, you can use a crowbar, whatever you have. It's a pretty simple process, but the cleaner you can remove them, the easier they'll be to reinstall cleanly. A couple other things I did as far as preparation goes is first I measured down every eight inches from the ceiling and painted a quick dark line where the gaps in the panels will be. I decided to leave about one eighth inch gaps and I like the dark look better than the white gaps. Um, it's also a lot more forgiving that way with the dark background. If the gaps aren't exactly the same size, no one will ever notice. Um, I also went ahead and made vertical pencil lines where all of my studs are, just so that I can hit them you know, whenever possible as I'm nailing these panels up. You can see it's coming along pretty nicely at this point. And you'll also see I'm working from the top down in case it's uneven at all at the bottom. That can be covered up with the baseboards. I've used a lot of different things as spacers when I've done paneling or shiplap type projects in the past. And the best thing I've found to use are these just plain popsicle sticks with some painting tape wrapped around it backwards. What this allows you to do is just put the stick up there and it'll stay in place nicely as you hold and nail the panels. Um, makes life a lot easier than using a coin or something else. Now I'm also trying to alternate where the vertical gaps end up so that they're not all lined up in the same exact place. So I ended up needing to cut a lot of boards down to different widths. And as you do this, if you're using a circular saw like I did, it's important to hold the board with the finished or stained side down to reduce the chipping that might happen. As you can see here, I sawed this one with the stained side up and got a whole bunch of kind of splintering and chips that happened, whereas on the other side, it's nice and clean. So make sure that the finished side is down and you should get a much cleaner cut. So I just kept plugging away at it. And here's how the final paneling turned out. Definitely a major upgrade from the plain white wall that was there before. And here's the final product. 
I'm pretty dang happy with it. I wasn't sure how this was even gonna turn out or look, but I think it, it looks pretty cool. Let me talk about a couple quick things on each of the two edges. I put some trim in here. This is just, um, I think it was just a one by four that I uh, ripped in half. Just stained it with the same stain. Reason is my house is 40 plus years old. It was, these walls are not perfectly straight. It was tricky to get um, all of the slats perfectly flush with the sidewall. So I think that's a, an easy fix to make it look clean and, and good on the sides. See, I added just a few screws there as uh, kind of accessory hangers. And then wanted to talk about these mirrors. So I wasn't sure what I was gonna do as far as mirrors. Mirrors are super expensive, especially, you know, big gym mirrors. So I actually found these at Lowe's, uh, less than $7 a mirror. So I just picked up seven of them and uh, you know, they're pretty cheap and you get what you pay for obviously, but I don't need nice fancy mirrors for a little home gym. So does the trick. I tried hanging them up with just some adhesive uh, foam pieces, but it didn't hold well at all. So I ended up just using my Brad nailer um, to nail to nail the tops of these and one in the bottom. And uh, since they're cheap mirrors with just PVC frames, it worked just fine. Also, as far as the slats, I just, I just used a Brad nailer for these. Um, if you want it to be more permanent and sturdy, you may want to use some adhesive along with the brads or the nails. But uh, I just use nails and they seem to be holding up just fine. And then the last thing I'll talk about just briefly is this little uh, weight rack I created here. Um, all this is is a couple two by fours that I bolted to the studs in the wall. So I used for each side, pull this off here, a um, couple just uh, quarter inch lag bolts and also a couple um, three and a half inch deck screws or I think they're just interior wood screws actually, but long screws to make sure I'm getting into the studs good make sure it'll hold and then I just used um, one inch pipe with uh, the or I guess this is three quarter with these flanges here and the four screws that are holding it steady so I don't think this is going to go anywhere at first I was a little nervous especially with the 245 pounders but with the lag bolts um, I think we'll be uh, we'll be okay so that's what I did for the weight holders and uh, that's uh how it turned out. So it was honestly very inexpensive and uh, pretty easy, a little bit time consuming, but overall nothing too challenging at all. So if you like it, give it a shot and uh, I'd love to hear how it goes. <laughs>